And then um, the biggest news of the whole event, this whole show, was that he brought out Jay Huss. He brought out Jay Huss, bro. Like, it was fucking awesome, man. Like, um, and again, I just think it's real. I get a little chills talking about it now, but I think it's a real testament to just how far the UK scene has come, right? That Drake, one of the biggest stars of the, in the world, right? The biggest star in the world, bar, bar none, right? Somebody that has re- very much so embraced the UK culture, somebody who's really popular in London, who's really popular in the UK by and large. People really like him, right? In general, right? He's not like um, one of those American artists that comes over, people kind of despise, he kind of, people really appreciate him, right? He, you know, he's about of the people he connects. He, you know, he's what he's involved in Top Boy. Um, he goes shopping and shit at the shops that we go shopping in in London. He hangs out with the guys that we like here in London that we appreciate. You appreciate the music. He's always putting some of the lyrics and passes his captions and stuff on some, you know, off key cuts of stuff that he, you know, he's actually watching on Grand Day and all that sort of stuff. So he's a good, cool dude. Big fan. We all love him. But it's real testament to how far the UK scene has come that Drake brings out Jay Huss and the reception from the crowd is insane. They probably screamed louder than they did when Drake came out initially. And that just goes to show just how big of a... Because I think in, the, in years gone by, a big UK person, a big US person bringing out a UK artist wouldn't be that popular because most of the UK people wouldn't even know that artist who they were, especially the people that weren't white. Especially the people that weren't black, sorry. They don't have no idea who that person was. Like, oh, okay, cool, whatever, right? But everyone in that crowd knew who he was. So much at the end of the performance when we were, when we kind of, um, when Drake kind of closed out, I heard a couple of lads kind of say, oh my God, man, like, wow, j House is out. j House is back on road. Like, fuck, that's awesome. Like, people were still talking about how amazing that situation was. And even Drake had acknowledged it, like, yeah, that was special, wasn't it? And it was because supposedly the story goes that he got released from prison, I think, the day before or that, on that same day. Um, and if you guys are aware that, you know, he went to prison for a, for a bit, I just think just under a year because he was unfortunately caught um carrying a knife when he was shopping around westfield the whole story goes that he was in danger like you know he was feeling threatened of his life and it kind of tied in with the whole you know knife camera thing that was happening at the time and him being a big star he kind of had to suffer the consequence of carrying that and he was made a bit of an example by and large and it kind of came just at the time when he was his style was really starting to ascend he dropped his album people were really impressed by him and it kind of just you know kind of stopped his momentum but um you kind of always felt as if like people were really had a lot of good sentiment towards him anyway. Jay House is someone that people always liked and were kind of looking forward to him to get out. And I remember, I think I actually had the, I think I actually was thinking about it the other day because I randomly started listening to Western, Into You, Into, sorry. And I remember listening, thinking, oh yeah, shit, one of the guys is in prison that was in it. And I think, oh, he should be out soon, right? If he does, I always think, you know, most people should be out if they do half their sentence. But I think he got four years, something along the lines of that. So he's already maybe done already two. So he should be out soon. And then immediately after thinking about the dude from Western, I thought about Jay Huss. I'm like, oh, he should be out soon too. And it was just a weird coincidence that when I go to the Drake show, we see Jay Huss in person. And I think he does a couple of tracks and just smack. No, he just does one. I think he does one. One in four, all, all the way through. And that's what he smashes it. Like, just a really good performance. And he, he looked genuinely happy. He looked genuinely ecstatic, like, genuinely. And I think it's a big deal because I think, by and large, the music industry is fickle as fuck. The fans are fickle. The industry is fickle. Your peers are fickle. So you're not you're within your rights to be a little bit nervous when you go into prison and you're a person like Jay Huss who's kind of you know starting to gain traction, starting to become popular, starting to become famous, starting to become well known for your music. You're allowed to feel a little bit scared. Oh shit! I'm not gonna come back and have anything to um to kind of call my own right when I come back. Um, people are not going to want to talk to talk about me or remember who I am anymore, right? You're well within your rights to think that because, you know, the music industry is fickle as fuck. So to have somebody like Drake of Drake's stature to come up, um, come to London, embrace you the way he did and allow you to come on his stage at the fucking O2, right? Sold out show Friday night and perform. That's fucking insane. And that's something that isn't, that's something that people don't do normally. And again, it's, it's one of those selfless acts that I think by and large, um should um let me go here to put here i think by and large that's something that should kind of um um that's something that by and large should get you how do you how do you say it that's something by and large that should allow drake to have good graces forever by and large because i think he's um 
the, the, the amount of good stuff that he does for people, even if you even if you might be a dick, might be hard to work with, or it may be those good things should actually always outweigh the bad. I think so, in my opinion, because who else does that? What, what person of Drake's stature is going to come to UK, be have their finger on the pulse, and allow somebody like a Drake, uh, someone like a Jay Hudson to be on their stage? Because you have to be of the streets, you have to be of the people, you have to know what's going on to even know who Jay Hus is, to even know what impact he has in the UK music, to even know why he's so important to even have the idea the wherewithal to have him part of the show it's just a fucking amazing experience i think a lot of people have got it on video oh the video thing ah that was super annoying bad people were fucking recording at that show um they were they didn't stop recording there were cameras fucking flashing every single minute of the day i put a couple of videos up on my instagram just because you know i wanted to flex some motherfuckers and show them i was at the show but by and large man just sit there and enjoy your fucking show you don't need to be always talking about it on social but anyway um, JS was there. I got there's a little video here that somebody uploaded. I'll quickly go upload here and, and see if you guys can see. Let's quickly let's just um fast forward this little bit. There you go. Let's see. Look at this. Look at this. So if anybody's sitting down right now, I need you to stand up. Because we're about to celebrate one of our brothers tonight. I think some people thought it was gigs and then look what happens. <laughs> Look at this. The crowd. Crazy. No one knew it was him. And then it starts like, everyone's like, oh, hold on, it's actually Jay Hart. It's like, it's so cool, man. The embrace is so real as well. Like, look at this. So nice, man. Look at this. So amazing, no? He's from Newham as well. It's just a fucking amazing, amazing story, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, not, not that crazy in Newham, but you know what I mean, man. It's, it's adjacent. I mean, Jubilee Land, a couple of stops, man. But yeah, fucking awesome. This came for real as well. So cool. So cool, man. So fucking cool. So fucking cool. Fresh home. Hey, hey, what a fucking flex to come out and, and, and Majesty's HMP, right? And, I give you the stage and then to the fucking the roll up to fucking the O2 and perform on a stage of drink. What a flex and a half. You see what I am? Oh, so good, man. Yeah, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. Such a big tune, man. but again, Jay House is absolutely amazing. I think so. You guys can hear it on the on the podcast. Um, he he was smashing it. He came out, did his whole tune, and everyone was super 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 happy to have him there. Um, and yeah, I just think it was awesome. Great show. Um, at the end, we kind of stayed for a couple of more hours, a couple of more hours in a blue room to kind of let the kind of crowd die down and go on a train to come home um that didn't really work because it was still busy you know it's drake man like everyone is uh, hanging around just having fun um everyone's hanging around having fun i sound like jordan woods in it we're just in, in young in la and just having fun you know um just having fun that was that was one of the, we're gonna look back at that interview and just marvel in it, at the kind of la-ness of that interview jordan woods what a top girl um when we left i think a lot of people had gone to the all bar one just around the corner um, for the O2, just to basically at the front, right, right, right at the front of the entrance, that was fucking rammed. But there's no way in hell that I'm going to an all by one on a Friday night. Like you have to, you have to pay me a lot of money to do that sort of shit. So I didn't go to the all by one, but everyone had a lot. Everyone looked like they were having their biggest time out in ever. Um, and I have to admit, man, the outfits are quite nice. I've got a bit of people there. The outfits are quite nice. A lot of roadman styles that I wouldn't probably wear, but I appreciate it. I like when it's done really well, you know, like heavy on the designer, incredibly tight, small t-shirts, tiny jeans, big trainers, you know, impeccable haircuts, jewelry. I quite like it, man. It's not for me, but I like the look. I like when it's done pretty well. I like the girls too when they have that kind of, you know, fashion nova, 40 look. Um, 40 luxury thoughts, right? Not, not, not like, you know, obscene and being too crazy, but, you know, done in the right way, you know skin out in the right section you know trying to look hot and sexy and stuff i like what i saw i think it looked incredible big fan of it um everyone by and large had quite good style everyone by and large was very nice very very 
um, warm and loving experience. Drake, even towards the end, was like, yeah, this is what we need to see. More unity. He was like, oh, some tap someone to your left and right, told them how much you love them and nice to meet them all that. So that was quite nice as well. Nice touch. And by the end, we left and it was a good night. And like I said before, like, I don't necessarily get to see too many A-list celebrities or A-list stars perform. You know, usually I can you know, I'm a, not, not because I'm a, not because I'm a hipster or anything, just because, you know, just availability. I tend to just see the people that are mostly on the come up. Um, it's a kind of indie acts or people that are on the rise, right? So when when you get to see top billing top performers, it's good to go see them because you just get to see the gap. You get to see why they are paid the big bucks. You get to see why they're the ones everyone thinks are the best in the industry by and large. And um, yeah, just the fact that he was able to go through so many of his old tracks. There's a bit in the middle where he kind of ran through mad cuts from mixtapes for thirty seconds, forty minutes, forty seconds, fifty seconds, seconds. That was fucking awesome. He played loads of stuff that I didn't expect to play. And just in general, just a fucking good show, man. I was really big, big fan of it. Um, again, maybe ticket prices are a little bit too expensive. A hundred quid to see Drake play in that kind of place, maybe a little bit too much, considering the fact that you know maybe the only person on the uh, that was opening up for him that he went to see was Tory Lanez, and maybe back on the nice hasn't got that much of a um, of a reputation in the UK just yet or internationally. Maybe if you had another person on the lineup that was a little bit more well known, it might make it worth it. But by and large, I liked him. It's a one-off thing. I don't really get to see people that often. He was saying at the end of the show that he wants to come to, back to England again next year. Instead of having two-year gaps, he wants to come back again, come back every year. So, you know, once a year, see a big person play, spend 100 quid. I get the same like seeing Beyonce or seeing Jay-Z or those kind of people play. I think it's well worth it in that regard. But yeah, good show, um, great production. And yeah, I think it's going to, ha- it's carrying on, I think, this week. I think the last show maybe is on Wednesday or something. Like that. So if you have a chance to go see him, I, I guarantee, I, I recommend that you do.